60K. in front of nine o'clock. I'm Ed Lambert. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome aboard. We're at 508 775 9985. Our toll free phone number is 1 888 WXDK 95. One email address ed at 95 WXDK.com. I'm in studio with Tim Whalen. Tim is running for uh, state representative for First Barnstable, which takes up a piece of about 452 towns, depending upon where you live. <laughs> A little bit of Brewster, a little bit of Barnstable, a little bit of uh, more of uh, Yarmouth, and of course all of uh, Dennis. Tim, good to meet you, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ed. I appreciate the opportunity to come in here and speak with you very, very much. Why are you running for state rep? Ed, I, uh, I came out of a career of 26 years in law enforcement, and I retired as a sergeant from the state police. I was the day shift commander at the barracks on Route 28 in South Yarmouth, and I would say that the number one issue that got me interested in running for this open seat was the EBT fraud. Um, I would see my troopers go out and they would make arrests and uh, we'd be bringing in drug dealers and they would have three, four, five EBT cards and the state, whenever we approached uh, uh, transitional assistance about this, there was no avenue to uh, address this, to, to charge the people criminally. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, that must drive you nuts. I mean, I mean that type of that type of thing. When you guys, when you see it firsthand, and it's not anecdotal. It's not somebody telling a story, Tim. It's this is what happens. I mean, this is what the guys go out there, the the men and the women from the from the troopers go out and bring the guys in. This is what's happened. The fraud, waste, and abuse. Sean O'Connell, another state rep, has talked yes, about sir. this forever and a day. And what can you do about it? They don't want to hear about it. The um, I mean, the issue that uh, really got to me was I think of how hard I work, and my wife, who's a uh, teacher here in Barnstable. I think of how hard we work and all the taxes that we pay, and I have neighbors and friends and people that I know in the district, and I, these folks are working so hard, and they're being taxed half to death, and the respect that the government's showing for this tax, for, for their tax money that they work so hard for, it's it's just not there, and um, that's our money, and drug dealers are taking it through the uh, a broken EBT system. I looked at the. Um, roadblocks that were being put up to real and reasonable reform, to uh, EBT reform, and uh, that those roadblocks were real. And it seemed that uh, it, it's such a basic issue. Stop letting money trickle away and go into the hands of drug dealers. And it was being fought up at the legislature. So I would say that that was the primary issue that got me off the couch and into this race. 508-775-9985. Our toll-free phone number is 1-888-WXTK-95. One, I'm talking to Tim Whalen. He's running for uh, state representative from the first Barnstable. Tim, the uh, juveniles that are that are uh, possibly coming here to Cape Cod either here or up in, outside of Springfield at Westover, uh, what's your feeling on that? I think right now, Ed, um, I, I'm opposed to the plan, and the reasons are many. Um, first and foremost is we don't have enough information. Government is stepping forward and doing what they want, and they're not telling, um, they're not telling the citizens what the real effects are. Um, they're not telling the citizens, I, I believe, accurately how long um, these children will be housed at Joint Base Cape Cod. Um, I'm a, uh, I'm a good Christian man, I'm a former altar boy and a practicing Catholic, and I, I believe um, that we should look out for our fellow man. I just don't know that this, is, uh, that, that this is the right move for the people here on Cape Cod. Um, I gave a speech at uh, an event that I had over the weekend, and I referenced the fact that we have homeless veterans living on the streets of Hyannis and elsewhere. We have elderly people um, that, are, uh, that are underhoused or homeless as well. I've seen this myself with uh, homeless folks that uh, live in their cars up on Route 132 in the park and ride, and I've dealt with and interacted with them regularly. Why aren't we addressing the needs of our own people first? Um, it's sinful that a combat veteran, a combat veteran cannot get housing at Joint Base Cape Cod, and we are instead going to open up the doors to these poor souls that are coming up from the border. Uh, I thought, uh, well put. I mean, I happen to agree with that 100%. Let's head over to Martha's Vineyard. Lee, you're on WXDK with uh, Tim Whelan. Good, uh, good morning, Lee. How you doing? Good, mo good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Lee. 
Uh, here's a sharp stick question for Tim. Okay, you, you've shown that you know, law enforcement is you know, coming across drug dealers with EBT cards. What's your answer to this? Are you going to avoid like some task force that's going to do nothing and but pontificate? Or are you going to hire more people to watch the people who should be watching the people who should be watching the people? What is it? What do you in, Lee, maybe the answer lies in crafting legislation to make it a criminal offense to misuse an EBT card. Because as of right now, I don't know of any offense on the books. Um, there were no charges that we could come up with when we caught that person with the four or five or six EBT cards. Maybe the answer lies there. you got to be kidding me. You mean there's no laws in the books that if you're committing fraud, <laughs> you, you, you're not tossed in jail? To charge someone with larceny um, over $250 because the benefits that are put in these cards exceed $250, I would have to actually follow that person to an ATM, watch them withdraw the money, and then watch them go and use the money for their own devices. I want to see people fired over this, you know. Well, Lee, I mean, a lot of people should be fired over this. I mean, one of the other ways around this, Lee, is to get a photo ID. If you want an EBT card, photo ID it, all right? So you don't have uh, Carlos walking around with Julie's EBT card that, he's, that he gave her 100 bucks for. I mean, there's, there's, a lot, there's some things that can be done about it, Lee, and people should be fired. But the, the will of the legislature up and, uh, you know, even till now, as Tim said, the will of the legislature isn't there to change it. They said, screw it. We're not going to, you know, there are too many votes out there. There are, you know, too many people that are relying on the, on the give out, the gimmies that are, and here I am doing all the talking. Sorry, that just, <laughs> that just ticks me off. Lee, well, in short order, um, uh, a few days ago I was uh, with my wife and we were out uh, somewhere running errands, and I went to use my American Express card, and when I went to use it, the gentleman behind the counter asked to see an ID because it was Absolutely. a company policy, and I high-fived them. I showed him my ID, I gave him a high five, and I said, thank you for, thank you for looking out for my, uh, my economic security. It's interesting you mentioned that. Now, when you go up to a place and you say, uh, and you give them a credit card, they're going to say, or a card, Visa, they say, is it credit or debit? And if you say credit, they're going to say, let me see some ID. God bless them for doing that. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, uh, I don't know, it's funny. 508 uh, 775 our toll-free phone number, one 888 wxdk ninety five one. Part of uh, your district, uh, Tim, uh, should you be elected, is going to be the whole DUI fiasco of what's going on with uh, Dennis Yarmouth, the school, the funding. How does that, uh, how do you take a look at those things, especially with your wife being a teacher? Well, Ed, um, when we first moved down here to the Cape, my wife uh, was actually serving as a principal at Station Ave Elementary School in the DUI district. So I'm, I'm very good friends with the administrative team at DUI. Um, in 2008, um, my wife and I were present for the tent meeting. I went to support her, even though we're residents of Brewster. She was uh, um, on um, Superintendent Woodbury's staff, her administrative team. So I've been involved in paying attention to these funding issues for, for years. It's not something that uh, just uh, popped onto my radar screen a while ago. Um, the, and I've had many, many conversations with, <coughs> excuse me, with Representative Cleon Turner on the subject. And I'll give credit where credit's due. Cleon Turner is a very learned man. He's a very bright man. And when it comes to Chapter 70 funding, he is, he's widely accepted as being an authority on it. Uh, the issues here are many. The easiest answer to this, I believe, is to um, properly fund the regional school transportation uh, budget and also to um, properly fund the circuit breaker funding for the, um, for, for the schools. And um, Chapter 70 is an uphill battle. Right now, there's legislation to try and look at and revisit the Chapter 70 funding formula, which hasn't been touched in over 20 years. But on the short term, I think that we need to try and find um, uh, new sources of funding to, um, to get to the DUI district. I just Like what, uh, Tim? I mean, uh, new sources of funding. I mean, you talking more taxes or, I mean, what kind of funding? Chapter, by the way, Chapter 70, everybody, as, as Tim Whalen has said, it's, it's been around for two decades. Nobody knows, nobody wants to change it up in Boston because the, the people in Lemonster are, are getting a hell of a lot more money than anybody else and, and that sure. type of thing, and they're not going to change it. They're not going to vote for it. So how do you get more funding to the school? Well, I'll use as an example, um, I just served, uh, I just completed my service on the Governor's Task Force on School Safety and Security. I served on that task force with um, uh, Superintendent Tchaikovsky from here in Barnstable and with Officer Nick Pasquarosa, that's the school resource officer in the DUI district. And um, uh, some of the recommendations that we came up with included trying to find adequate funding for 
school departments so that they can increase uh, security in the buildings, putting in what they call Columbine door locks as a for instance, trying to improve the physical plant of the building and by um, finding funding this way, um, it should free up some of the capital budget um, for these schools. So. That's just one avenue that we can look at. So what you're saying is looking at different pots of money that are out there, uh, possibly from Homeland Security, possibly from other people for this type of thing, which would allow more money to, to go into other things in the school. And I believe we can do this without raising taxes, Ed, because, again, it's all about reprioritizing the needs of government. When we are spending $1.1 billion to put in, uh, an expansion on the Boston Convention Center, and we are spending millions to buy new rail cars for the MBTA, what does that do for people down here in the 1st Barnstable District? I say nothing. We Zero. have, we have a leaky roof at the Eddy School in Brewster, um, so students have to worry about being um, rained on when it's raining outside. We're getting no support from the state for that. And uh, with the asbestos issue when the ceiling came down at the Ezra Baker School in Dennis, yeah. again, zero support from the state. But we can spend all that money to put an addition on an underutilized ex, uh, convention and exhibition center in Boston. It drives you nuts. It does. I mean, it builds yes. up the priorities. Tim Willey and I'm Waylon. I'm talking with him this morning. He's running for state rep in First Barnesville. Very quick, uh, Rick said, "Hey Ed, uh, would you please ask uh, Tim Whalen what can be done regarding the recent Massachusetts State Police Directive, which mandates that troopers not arrest illegal immigrants with ICE uh, detainers? Uh, and since when can the federal warrants be ignored by the Massachusetts State Police if they can?" Here's a little background on this. Is uh, As I had mentioned, I uh, recently retired in November um, in order to be able to run for office. I had to retire because there, there are departmental rules that prevent any member of the department from running for any elective office, municipal, state, federal, what have you. Um, for years and years, when a trooper would run a warrant check, um, among the warrant checks that would come back, was uh, there were federal checks. So uh, ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, would have listed in the federal database any um, immigration detainers or arrest warrants for um, uh, illegal immigrants. And we would take those people into custody based on an ICE detainer. It would involve the barracks calling ICE and making sure that they were in fact going to come for this person. And when they said that they would, then we would take them into custody. We would hold them, ICE would come and get them, and then they would be put through the federal court process. So recently an email was um, issued by a member of the command staff of the state police. And I know this member of the command staff well, and he is a good person, and he's a dedicated public servant. And this email prohibits troopers from arresting um, illegals solely on the basis of the existence of an ICE detainer. Um, if another arrestable offense exists, they can be arrested, but it, just solely based on this arrest warrant, this federal arrest warrant, they can't be arrested. So. We now cannot arrest people on the existence of a federal arrest warrant if it's an ICE detainer. Um, and this to me is counterintuitive because on many occasions I, would, I had arrested people on federal ICE detainers and there's a reason why ICE has issued these detainers. It could be for criminal activity by that person. Um, it could be that they've already gone through the immigration system, been deported and come back. Um, the, the reasons are many. And um, again, it uh, runs counter to my training and my experience it runs counter to what's best for public safety to issue this order. But again, I have no doubt in my mind that the lieutenant colonel that issued this order uh, didn't do it of his own volition. It, uh, I believe that there, were, there was likely some uh, political arm twisting going on in the, uh, in the background. From the state? Yes, sir. Um, From the state directly? Yes, sir. And right now there's a piece of legislation. It's a Senate bill um, called the Trust Act. Yeah. And that was offered by Senator Jamie Eldridge. And what it does is it proposes precisely this. It proposes that um, state and local police officers in Massachusetts, that they not arrest people on ICE detainers. This is a piece of legislation that has not, it, it, it hasn't passed through the legislature. It hasn't been signed into law. It is not a law. It is simply a piece of legislation. Yep. Yet it's already being promulgated by the Massachusetts State Police. And then two weeks ago, there was a uh, Boston City Councilor, uh, Councilor Zakem, who stood up and proposed a city ordinance to do the exact same. So it hasn't even passed through the legislative process yet. Not the process is important, I suppose, um, but it's already being pushed upon law enforcement officers. We talked about it, the Trust Act. Talk about a misnomer for, for something coming through. Trust. Trust us, we won't do anything to you. 
we got to take a quick break. I'm Ed Lambert. I'm with Tim Whalen. He's running for state rep in the first Barnstable. Quick break. I'll be back. What's going on, Maddie? Ed Yarmouth Selectman make a decision on their town meeting article warrant for next week. Mark Rosenthal says mostly sunny with a high of 79. Details coming up on News Radio 95 WXTK. Mm -hmm. 